going to live with this sound? We're going to have to live with this. Yes. Ooh. Well, these microphones uh, are, very uh, are very directional, mm -hmm. so I think we'll, we'll be okay. All right. So okay. you're rolling? You see? Yes. Well, almost I'm the same <laughs> black and the same <laughs> <laughs> great coincidence. That's, that's very good karma to be the <laughs> actor. <laughs> it's wonderful. I just discovered it. <laughs> Uh, well, I feel like General Oblivion, who was the, the Russia, the famous Moscow Film Festival, and with, I think it was General Oblivion and Elizabeth Taylor, both was wearing the same dress from Valentino. Yes. I remember reading this in the newspaper, it was a scandal, but I think it was late, early 60s or late 60s, something like that. Then we are, we are falling into the same... <laughs> the same mistake. But probably not the same designers. For well, sure not. <laughs> so we can't fire our designers. Uh, the opposite. <laughs> we have really to believe that we are dressing very well. <laughs> the Let's first start. Thing, uh, the first thing, Hector, I'm going to ask you to do is to pronounce the name of the prison and the name okay. of your movie. Okay. It's very good. It's a, it's a native, it's an Indian name, which came from the, 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 the beginning of the the city of San Paulo in the 16th century. The name is Karandiru, Karandiru, C-A, Karandiru. Very easy to pronounce, but there is no translation. Doesn't mean absolutely nothing. Maybe low uh, swamp lands or, or very wet lands because it was very near from the Tieta River, which was where the city started to be grown, to, to, to found it. Uh, Karandiru is the name of the house of detention, and this is the name of the movie, and at the same time is the name of the train station where the doctor used to arrive every Monday over 15 years period in which he was doing medicine at the, at the, at the establishment, at the place. I must tell you, when I came out of the film, I admire the film very much. I admire you as a filmmaker. Thank you. And I, I admire the film very much. I thought it was just a, a, an exquisite piece of work, but very tough. And I said to one of the people here, this movie takes no prisoners. <laughs> and do you know that, that expression in English? No, very well. I was r right away to ask you to translate me, to help me to know what really means take no prison. Well, in other words, uh, it, it just totally engulfs you. I, I, yes. I, of course, this was my intent. <laughs> I knew there was somebody in Dallas that we will feel like that, and I did it in purpose. <laughs> no, you know, the movies are a full experience. You cannot fool around with a subject like this one, you know. It's, first, you are dealing with the life of a lot of people. Second, is a movie all based in characters who really are in prison. You have to be, to, to a certain extent, you have to respect what they tell you. You cannot manipulate the information that they give to you. You cannot manipulate the way how they see themselves and how they tell you their own stories. Uh, 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 and, is the, and there are extremely, uh, 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 there are extremely strong the stories of these people because. Besides the fact uh, uh, that they did horrendous things to society, this is why they are in punishment. This is why they are <laughs> guilty, uh, confined in a prison, uh, lack of the possibility of not, not being free or not being at liberty with their families, doing whatever they want to do. I, there are human beings. There are people who are fathers, there are sons, there are brothers. And, and, and in certain way, there are living confines in this brutal way, middle age ways, style. But there are, uh, uh, which interested me the most, was in the, uh, is to see how these people were able to uh, organize socially among themselves in order to guarantee their own survival inside the institution and, and to see which kind of codes they are establishing in order to live all together. And, and to see that sometimes uh, there, is more, there is more good sense in the way how they are dealing inside this prison than the laws that we have outside the prison. And, and these moments in South America is being a civil war. 
among the ones who had everything and the ones who don't have absolutely nothing. And, 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 and life has been very difficult, very dangerous, very, the price of life is almost, mm, <laughs> doesn't cost anything. Crimes are popping up all over the places, in all the corners for narco, narco drugs, uh, rivalries. The police is totally unprepared to control the situation. Means we're living in the big cities in South America, Colombia, Mexico, Argentina, Brazil. A, a very chaotic situation, you know, and, and these are the characters which are in prison, the ones who are responsible for this chaos, but also there are chorus out of what they did because in some way society is not prepared to, 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 to help the poor families and there is no birth control. There is absolutely nothing. These people are, they are growing like, like, like little beasts and, and, and there is no education for their kids. There is no public health. Means <laughs> then <laughs> sometimes crime uh, uh, arrive to your, to, to your life sooner than what you suspect because you are feeling extremely pressured uh, uh, and not being able to guarantee substantial surviving for your family, you know what I'm saying? And it's in a very complex situation. I was extremely non-judgmental, okay? I took exactly the same position that the doctor took doing medicine over 15 years at this, uh, uh, in, this, in this house of detention. I didn't want to know what is right or what is wrong, who did bad things or good things, and just played my, part, my, my role as a movie director, as a storyteller, and in a very flat and neutral way. If you are telling me that something, I'm believing in what you are telling me. I'm not gonna put myself in the position of the investigator to try to dig for the truth or for the lies, okay? I'm just dealing with what I see. There was a big rebellion. I'm taking the position of listening the one who had survived the rebellion. And, and, and I'm just telling what I heard from, from what they saw because they were able to make it alive for some reasons, one and, and others means that it's a, it's, it's, I would say that it's a, it's a 10 round heavyweight experience to watch the movie, you know? It's like, it's like the bell, when the movie starts, the bell is rang, ringing, the little banquet is being thrown away, and then you are, you know? Or you punch or you get punched. Think of the movies and other, but at the same time that you are saying to me, and I'm extending my conversation because I get excited, it's early morning, our first conversation, I like your, your, your smile and, and your question, uh, 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 is uh, the movie itself is a very honest movie. The movie does not cheat. The movie does not introduce any, any codes of, of fiction to manipulate the emotions of the audience. The movie does not try to be sentimental. The movie is absolutely non-judgmental. The movie is not, doesn't not elaborate any manifesto or ideological speech. The movie is, uh, le I'm gonna tell you a story according to what I heard, period. This is my, my point of departure, and I think and I was extremely faithful to my, to, to, to my commitment to this concept. Everything we see in the movie, did that actually happen? I mean, the various events. Uh, for instance, uh, the wedding of the two inmates, um, the, um, uh, the drugs being openly used, uh, all of that. Did that actually happen? This is the beauty of, of the prison, talking in a very uh, conceptual way, because the idea that we have always about prisons are prisons in which the prisoners get a number printed in their chest in the gray uniform, uh, their heads have been shaved, uh, and there is a, a tendency of imposing through discipline, uh, uh, imposing a code of, 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 of being in which one became a mass. Everybody are the same. 
If you have 10 people or 100 people, you are just called the prisoners and then you will give their number. And this prison uh, 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 is exactly the opposite. Uh, uh, there is no uniform, there is no discipline, there is no place to go for lunch or for dinner. They will cook and they will get from the kitchen certain basic meals at lunch time, at dinner time, in order to eat in their own cells. Uh, 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 the guards, which are extremely few for s the, the, the big amount of people, then they have, they have to see as they don't see anything what's going on. As far as there is no complications, you know what I'm saying? Uh, 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 and, and the prisoners are able to be whom they were outside the prison. They will keep their nicknames, they will keep their clothing according what they have or what they would like to wear. And, and, uh, and the relations are extremely more free, more open. And you know what I learned as a result of, of seeing the experience of this prison in which, just answering your question shortly, uh, uh, everything that you see in the movie is exactly as was written in the book because this is what the doctor had witnessed. Uh, and I double check most of the things that are exactly like that. Is the, it's a great lesson of tolerance. Because when you are sleeping in a room in which there are room for four people and there are 11 sleeping, you have to learn, learn to be tolerant with the other because there is no physical room for all these people. Then you have to reorganize the use of the space. You know, you have to reorganize uh, 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 your way of dealing with the guy who is in your right, the guy who is in your left, the guy who is at your feet. Because uh, 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 if you, any moment of transgression is going to end up in a big fight. It's in a big fight will start. The levels of rage the, in which these people live is so at the border, is so at the limit, you know, that one drop more of water and the disaster can always show up, you know. And this is, is for me, which I've never been in prison in my life. Uh, far from that, uh, uh, for, for me it was an, a great experience to see how these people who did so bad things to society to deserve to be in prison uh, could be so relaxed and so and so and so human characters like 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 anybody else. It's like if it's like if the system is still is not able to massificate the amount of people who are in the prison, the system will allow them to each one still keep being whom they were the day that they arrived to the prison. And I think this is a major achievement, although the, the social condition in which they live is brutal and awful and absurd. This is why the buildings were demolished and the full system collapsed. But I think I had the privilege of being witness of something who doesn't exist anymore in Brazil. And this was printed in, in, in film, and now the movie is going all over the world. How much of the movie did you actually shoot inside the detention center? Listen, we started the production exactly at the moment in which the governor of Sao Paulo promised us to give uh, 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 one of the nine buildings, the first one then will be disoccupied because they were transferring the prisoners little by little over a year and a half. They took the 8,000 people to different prisons and they built it with new, under a new regime in different places of the state. Uh, uh, as soon as they had, we had the promise of the first building, uh, 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 we organized the, 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 the production schedule. We shot in the real prison for uh, six weeks, six weeks out of 14 weeks of shooting. We shoot all, everything that you see in the movie, like uh, the facade with all the windows with the iron bars, the big walls surrounding the presidium, the soccer field, the inner patio, uh, 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 everything of that, the sequence would take place in these areas, 
uh, was shot in the real in the real presidium. Everything that you see in the movie, which is inner corridors, cells, uh, inner uh, uh, staircases, the the lobby where the staircases will really stop floor, floor by floor. There are three floors, ground one, two, and three. Yes, that's right. Uh, was shot in the stage, doing a perfect combination, a perfect facsimile of was of what was the real the real the real prison because it's impossible the rooms are too small if you have to put eight people in one room plus crew plus light will be impossible and remember that these walls uh, are heavy walls are heavy from <laughs> penitentiary right you don't you don't tell your 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 crew please remove this wall then they will re we will redo it tomorrow you know what i'm saying it's a little bit more, more difficult than that did you use actual prisoners in the movie? No, 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 no. The prisoners wanted very much to work as an extras, especially because they have a lot of spare time, because they are curious, because they would love to make a little petty cash in daily, day, in daily basis to work. But, and this was my first big, 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 uh, uh, not conflict, but my big point uh, with them, because Everybody was asking me, why are you not using these people? And nobody was understanding my concern. And I want to tell you which was my concern. My concern was that each prisoner has a wife, if not a wife, a girlfriend. For sure, everybody has a mom or a father. Most of them are married with children. They live in Nerbu. Their family live in Nerbu. They were not being able to understand that when the movie will be finished, will be in the theater. And at the theater, everybody will see that they are in prison. And, and no family has a family member in prison. Uh, 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 uh. It's a stigma all the time. You know, nobody likes. You can deal with that as, 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 as well resolved as you feel like it's OK. But, but nobody wants to see his father or his husband, you know, uh, uh, one thing is to know that somebody is in jail. Uh, another thing is to see that he is in jail in a public, in a public piece of movie making. You know, then I I I I'm trying to be as more ethical than what everybody was asking me to do. And I think today, year and a half after having shot the film, the film, then I did the right thing. Did you actually get to meet the doctor and some of the prisoners and talk with them? Mm-hmm. No, the, the characters who are in the book, which are the ones which I portrayed in the film, I used to visit it a lot to double check the information, to know how they smile, how they behave, whom they are. And the doctor has been my personal doctor for 14 years. <laughs> this is the greatest coincidence of, of all. Uh, 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 he's an oncologist. I had some, some big C problems from the late 80s. I had a lymphoma. And I met him in his, uh, at the clinic. And then when I was in treatment, uh, uh, I knew that he was doing once a week medicine in this place and used to tell me the stories. Means in some way we're coming together since, uh, since the late 80s in, in, in professional terms and in terms of friendship. Okay. Uh, Mike, hang on just a second. Has the movie been shown in Brazil? Well, the movie is the largest box office in Brazilian movie history. It made almost 5 million tickets. It made like 12 or 14 million dollars box office, which in Brazil is gigantic. And we did more than Matrix Reloaded, more than Men in Black, more than Spider-Man. It's an, a gigantic, gigantic hit in Brazil, the movie. This is what surprised all of us a lot, to see that the movie reached so many different levels of the society as entertainment. This is which, this was a surprise. This really was a surprise. At any time, did you fear for your life, for yourself, or for your actors and crew? 
We were shooting in very difficult places uh, 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 and very poor neighbors where people don't understand what you are doing. And, and I, th I would say that many times we were extremely, uh, 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 we, we, we used to explain to the community each time that we were to shoot in a new place what we were doing, whom we were, why we were, we were there, uh, uh, we were trying to hire to do uh, day work people from the place, extras from the place in order to help the community. And, 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 but never was a really a, 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 a difficult time, never was. A, even day shooting with 1,200 or 1,500 extras, people were coming for very distant neighbors and, and, and were coming just for the morning and the people who are unemployed for sure because people who can expend the full Wednesday or Thursday, a weekly day, the full day to, 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 to perform as an extra because they don't have an steady job. Uh, I never, I don't, I'm, I'm, I don't recall to having any, any moment of tension or in which you have said, what's going on now? What should I do? Uh, I think it's, I was extremely uh, uh, insecure sometimes because you know, being the leader, being the one in commando, you are the one who, who gets more attention than anybody else. Besides that, I'm not na Braz native Brazilian. I still carry an, a certain uh, uh, Hispanic accent. I was born in Argentina, and I've been living in Brazil for 30 years, but I was born in Argentina means uh, 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 I'm a kind of a, 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 a character who call attention because I'm the one who's giving the orders, you know. But I knew that the production put somebody to take care of me. I knew that the production each time they were shooting nights, uh, in, when I, my car was taking me back home, then there was another car with, with, with people taking care of myself, following me. But I, I really, I gave up to think about it because otherwise it would be impossible to be to be the director of the field. Well, Hector, again, we thank you so much for coming to Dallas and uh, for bringing your film, which we will see, which will open a little bit later. And I'll be running the interview uh, nearer the time of the opening. Of I appreciate, it. Bob. It was a chance because, you know, Dallas is not in the obligatory circuit of foreign films, uh, 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 of foreign films. There are usually there are other cities like Boston, Chicago, LA, New York, San Francisco. And when they said to me, the possible, can you make it just for the day? There is a community who love movies there. They never, almost nobody goes there. I said, I will do it, I will do it for sure. And here we are <laughs> chatting, I really appreciate it. It was a pleasure. Thank you. In the making of this film, did you use any prisoners, I mean real prisoners? Uh, as I mentioned to you before, uh, no. Because uh, I think it was not the right thing to be done. I okay, thought that's, that's fine, all right. Um, has this movie been shown in Brazil? Oh yeah, the movie opened at April 13, 2003 and almost 300 prints. It okay, went very, 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 very well. Right. I'll, I'll ask that que question a different way. How is this movie, how is this movie received in Brazil? Um, Brazilians uh, these days after dictatorship, um, a moment in which we're living a moment of splendor and okay, democracy. that's fine, that's fine. Um, how much of the movie was filmed at the prison? Um, the movie had uh, uh, almost 80% of the movie shot in the prison, which was divided 50% shot in the real prison and 50% shot on the stage. Did you ever have a chance to talk with some of the real prisoners and especially the doctor? Oh yes, oh yes. I used to go with the doctor every Monday, and he used to introduce me as his assistant. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> not, not to raise suspicions. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we were lying. <laughs> okay, hang on just one second. Um, how was it that the prisoners were allowed to have so much control? I mean, open use of drugs and sex and even a wedding. Mm -hmm. You know, the wedding is fun. I didn't have the chance to tell you in the interview, but once a year they do a communitary wedding in which, for instance, 20 or 25 or even 30 prisoners get engaged and they do a collective marriage in which a priest is coming, the guy from the civil department, the one who does the documentation, uh, the official guy, and they get, and they do a wedding for 30 or 40 couples at once sponsored by the mayor, sponsored by, by, the, by the prison itself. And there was a funny scene in the movie that unfortunately I had to cut it out because the movie was too long and we already had the, 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 the wedding of the transvestite with this little guy, okay? There was like two similar situations. There was no room in the movie for both. And I thought then the marriage uh, among the, the tiny little man called uh, Too Bad, which in reality the real nickname is No Way, because this was his written in his t-shirt, and the transvestite was more poignant, was more funny, was more kind of humoresquely grotesque, and I preferred it, uh, uh, the, the wedding that we have in the movie against the other, which was more socially rich, but this one is more, is more funny. Were the w weddings, <coughs> excuse me, were the weddings same sex no, 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 boys and girls. Because you know what happened? Many girls love to be engaged to prisoners because they are sure that they're not, are not gonna be betrayed because the guy is in prison. And there is something who attracts you ladies, you have to tell me, <laughs> I'm not a lady, which is the kind of attraction that we'll find uh, 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 engaging with a man who still has to be inside the walls for another five or 10 or 12 or eight years and wait for that. Apparently, it's a kind of, of a proof of a bond. It's a proof of pact of love. I think it's something very interesting that which deserve to be better uh, studied. You know, it reserves certain analysis and investigation and eventually it can be a beautiful documentary to go over all, because there are a lot. It's, there are girls, as you see in the movie, who will ask somebody who go on a Sunday visit, please introduce me so, to somebody because I would like to be engaged with a prisoner. What prisoner have that we don't have? <laughs> this is the question. I'm not one of those women. I know that. <laughs> I know that. Okay, I well. know that from you will not have a good answer. <laughs> <laughs> no, it wouldn't work for me. I know that. <laughs> <coughs> but it's, 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 it's rich, right? It's very curious. Yeah. It's very curious. 